Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order was a very interesting game, if not an entirely successful one. Combining the exploration and puzzle solving of Metroid games with combat mechanics inspired by Dark Souls, but the game itself was saddled with technical issues, particularly at launch, that dampened the experience. A pretty brisk three and a half years later, and Respawn has delivered its sequel, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. This is a boundary-pushing current-gen exclusive built on Unreal Engine 4 with ray tracing and advanced image reconstruction. So does Jedi Survivor rival the best-looking current-gen games, and has it repeated some of the technical sins of its predecessor? From the moment you press play on Jedi Survivor, it's clear that you're looking at something special. The game opens with a truly stunning real-time cutscene. The characters are highly detailed, but the lighting, which shows impressive detail and true-to-life fidelity, is the real star of the show. Just look at how consistent and correct the material properties across the characters are. These findings apply to the PS5 and Series X releases, and not quite as much to the Series S, which we'll be covering separately at the end of this video. That basically sets the tone for the entire game's visual presentation. Jedi Survivor's lighting is super consistent and rich in a way that's tough to achieve with conventional rasterized lighting techniques. Here we seem to be looking at a sort of RTGI system, probably a probe-based ray-traced global illumination that seems to become more dense around the player character. Though without explicit confirmation from the developer, it's not 100% clear. If we look at the PC version, we can separate out the ray-traced and non-ray-traced iterations of the game's lighting. Across the environment, the ray-traced lighting provides a richer, more realistic portrayal of light relative to the baked GI solution that otherwise seems to be in use. Look at the sign here, for instance. The RTGI gives the game a properly placed light highlight. While the non-RT version just has a faint, diffuse glow, and there's a bit of light leak under the table in the non-RT view as well. The improvements here ranged from minor to quite dramatic, but the lighting in fine geometry is much more consistent with RT enabled. And if we toggle RT on while playing, we can clearly see the RT lighting pop into place over multiple frames while the game is actually running. Cutscenes show much the same pattern. Some shots can look quite similar, but the RT gives the game a greater level of consistency, evening out problems in otherwise well-lit scenarios and delivering much better outcomes when the rasterized lighting fails. The lighting looks good without RT, but the game gets a substantial visual boost when you do toggle on these RT settings, which are enabled on PS5 and Series X as well. Jedi Survivor also packs another RT staple, RT Reflections, but in slightly more muted form here, I would say. In most shots, the RT basically functions as a fallback when screen space information is occluded. Combining SSR and RT Reflections is common, of course, but here the SSR is substantially higher quality and has much better lighting information, and it's basically overlaid over the RT reflection most of the time. The RT just makes reflective objects look more correct and consistent with the environment, especially when they're aligned parallel to the camera. This window here is a good example. With screen space information totally unusable, the RT reflections provide a reasonable looking, if faint, reflection of the scene. The lighting is simplified and the reflection itself isn't super high resolution, but in context it works pretty well. Across metallic surfaces, the RT reflections provide a much more realistic lighting treatment too. You don't need incredibly detailed reflections to work effectively across these semi-gloss materials. Those RT techniques wouldn't help too much if the underlying artwork was unattractive, but Jedi Survivor has dense and striking environments. Polygonal detail is super impressive here, with lots of fine curved geometry like cables and wires snaking through the opening tutorial area. Every mesh is just brimming with triangles, which stands out most in some of the more close quarters artificial spaces that the game sends you through. More expansive shots work out just fine as well, of course. The naturalistic environments are equally as impressive. There's so much in the way of fully modeled minor details, like pebbles and vines, and the broad rock formations don't portray any obvious polygonal concessions. Foliage is abundant here as well, with pockets of grass and shrubs spreading out of every dirty crevice in the stony ground. We're not necessarily seeing any fundamental next generation technology here. Nanite is off the table, for instance, 
given that this is at its heart an Unreal Engine 4 based game. But the sheer quantity and quality of environmental assets is a step beyond last generation efforts. That becomes especially obvious when you bring in Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Jedi Survivor's predecessor. Ground surfaces are much more detailed, environments are built with a far greater polygonal budget, and foliage is denser and showcases proper variety. Fallen Order was a very good looking game for its time period, but this new title is simply way ahead in every metric in these spaces. Jedi Survivor's environmental designs are larger scale and more interesting as well in my opinion, as some of the planets in Fallen Order could look a bit bland. And when we compare a specific area that appears in both games side by side, in this case the Mantis ship, the comparison really flatters the new game in just about every respect. Of course, we're getting a lot of extra polygonal density and texture detail across each surface. Some five years after the original game, the Mantis is in a state of relative disrepair, and that shows in scratched paint and scuffed surfaces. Just look at the wall panel here. In Fallen Order, it's flat, clean, and sort of featureless, whereas in Survivor, the paint has been stripped on the edges of the pressed metal through wear and tear and the panels have been fleshed out with new geometry and mechanical adornments. The same holds true for the rest of the vessel as well. The other key improvement, of course, comes from the lighting. The original looks fine here with a sort of moody dark lighting setup that looks sort of cool but doesn't really correspond to how the lights are actually set up in this space. All the lighting in Jedi Survivor seems to accurately contribute to the final look of each shot, with emissive lighting in particular a real standout. The interior looks evened out somewhat, with subtler distinctions between light and dark. The lighting setup is mostly similar, but a few spots have had artistic tweaks, like the corridor to the mechanical room, which is now mostly lit from door frame mounted lights. The main character also looks more realistically grounded within these spaces, without the gamey look that the prior game suffered from. On the whole, Jedi Survivor is definitely up there in my eyes with the best looking games of this generation so far. I think the key takeaway is that Respawn has dialed up the artwork to really take advantage of the new console hardware, while introducing select ray tracing lighting effects to make that artwork truly shine. This isn't a fully ray traced behemoth by any means. Shadows are handled using a mix of shadow maps and screen space shadows, for instance, but the overall visual impact of the experience is very pleasing, especially in those stunning real-time cinematics. There's plenty that I don't have a lot of time to touch on as well, like the hair, which looks great and responds appropriately to player velocity, or the cool separation you see when wading through mud, or the excellent enemy design, or the consistency and responsiveness of the animation work. Jedi Survivor is hugely impressive on a number of levels, but this does come with a cost, as we'll see very soon. So far, I've been showing off Jedi Survivor on PS5 in its resolution mode, and there is a good reason for that. The game operates using heavy upsampling courtesy of AMD's FSR2 to achieve its final rendered imagery, and that technique works much better with a higher internal resolution. For the PS5 version of the game, my colleague Tom Morgan counted results roughly in the ranges on screen for the two modes on offer. Essentially, the PS5 renders at around approximately 1152p or 720p during gameplay, depending on the visual mode, with heavy upsampling to make that imagery look good on a high resolution display. In resolution mode, it looks like the game is upsampling to 4K, while performance mode upsamples to 1440p. Both modes do maintain the ray tracing effects, however, and there doesn't seem to be a substantial difference between them outside of resolution and some minor differences in foliage. As a final note, cutscenes on both modes run in the same resolution window, with a 4K-like image resolve and a 30fps performance cap. Exactly how well this works in practice is going to be a matter of personal taste and the display you have. With motion blur on in the resolution mode, I didn't find it to be too annoying sitting a typical viewing distance from a large, slightly laggy VA LCD television but the game does suffer from substantial artifacting, specifically around fine geometric edges and character silhouettes that kicks up basically any time there's movement. This gets worse in the performance mode, which struggles somewhat against its relatively low internal resolution. We're going to be seeing a lot of aggressive upsampling in use as this console generation progresses, but I do wish that the results were a little bit cleaner here. 
Series X fares about the same as PS5 in terms of image quality, and pixel counts come in at roughly the same figures, as you might expect. We're still looking at heavy upsampling in both visual modes, with substantial artifacting and aliasing as a result. Let's look at performance, starting with Series X. In its resolution mode, the X does manage to hold a pretty consistent 30 FPS. Long stretches of gameplay run at a straight 30 without any real deviance. There's a one-off dropped frame sometimes, but we're mostly looking at a pretty decent 30 FPS update here. And Unreal Engine 4's excellent motion blur leaves the game looking pretty smooth in motion. However, there are moments where the game can drop pretty hard. Certain spots during gameplay and cinematics tend to chug badly, notably when large alpha effects are on screen. It's a bit annoying, but not terribly frequent. And frame rate drops in Jedi Survivor on all consoles are often accompanied by tearing in the top third of the screen, presumably a measure to improve input response, though the tear lines can be pretty distracting. The performance mode targets a 60fps update, and unfortunately, the results aren't great. In the opening level, performance tends to hover between 45 and 60fps in a sort of frame rate no man's land, with near constant tearing as a result. This is punctuated occasionally by larger frame time spikes as well. Subsequent naturalistic areas like Kobo tend to run with more consistent performance, though these also suffer from occasional drops. On a conventionally refreshed panel, I'm not a big fan, but VRR displays cope better with the uneven performance. The PS5 seems to perform similarly enough. Again, expect a relatively consistent resolution mode with some minor drops and bizarre trouble spots, and a performance mode that really struggles to reach 60fps in some areas. There's not much performance between the two consoles as far as I can tell, with both exhibiting similar drops in the same spots. So far, we've addressed the PS5 and Series X versions of Jedi Survivor. So how does Microsoft's power-constrained Series S fare? Unfortunately, a quick side-by-side -side reveals that ray tracing seems to be out of the picture for Series S users. The subtle lighting detail present on the higher-end consoles seems entirely absent here, a concession to meet the capabilities of Microsoft's junior console. Plus, there's only one visual mode here, targeting 30 FPS, with no performance option whatsoever. Even without the ray tracing features of PS5 and Series X, and a firm 30 FPS target, image quality still falls a little bit below my expectations. It looks like we're seeing roughly a 1080p reconstruction target here, based on the scaling artifacts, general lack of detail in the final image, and blurry UI. Internally, the game seems to operate around 864p or so most of the time, which sort of splits the difference between the resolution and quality modes available on the other platforms. It's not an entirely unexpected result for the console, though I really hoped the ray tracing features would be retained. Outside of those configuration changes, the visual settings do look similar to the higher end machines. Asset quality may be a bit lower, but the resolutions make it sort of hard to tell what specifically could have taken a hit. Performance here comes in at a stable 30 FPS. Loading thresholds can get it to stutter sometimes, just like the other platforms, but it holds 30 quite well. It's definitely possible that the machine could get stressed by more challenging late game content, but the general run of play feels stable and smooth. Although again, we are taking a big visual hit relative to the premium consoles. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a game of two halves. Firstly, and most impressively, Jedi Survivor looks excellent. Thanks to highly detailed models and an effective RT implementation, the game is often stunning and can hold its own against the top tier of current gen titles. It's really pleasing work, and Respawn has delivered a game that makes very effective use of current gen hardware, which is a rarity so far this generation. But the other side of Jedi Survivor isn't quite as positive. Image quality concessions had to be made to deliver this level of visual fidelity, with heavy FSR2 based upsampling producing noticeable artifacting in general gameplay. And performance isn't great either. The 30 FPS targeting modes mostly work okay, punctuated occasionally by frame rate drops and tearing, while the performance mode on Series X and PS5 offers a pretty shaky tear filled update. There are other issues too, including visual and gameplay bugs that pop up from time to time, occurring pretty often relative to what we usually see in big budget releases. You get the sense that the game probably needed a few extra months of polish on consoles to look its best. 
and the PC version, which Alex took a look at in an earlier video, is in very poor shape at the moment. Respawn does seem to be aware of the issues on all platforms and is readying patches, so hopefully some of these problems will be rectified soon enough. So for now, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a flawed gem from a graphical perspective. The level of visual accomplishment shouldn't be understated, but neither should its performance woes. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and press the bell for YouTube notifications. Check out the Patreon at digitalfinder.net for exclusive and early access content. And to get in touch, just use Twitter. Thanks for watching.